Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I'm Wayman Lee from Cal Poly Pomona, and I'm a faculty there in the Department of Landscape Architecture. And it's really my pleasure to be here today to talk to you about geodesign for sustainable landscape systems, integrating connectivity and suitability. Credit also goes to my colleagues, Dr. Liam Milburn and a team of um, 606 Studio graduate student, um, Alex Fanan, Eugene, uh, Eugene Young, Jonathan Parisho, and Michelle Moteno. And uh, as landscape architects and landscape planners, um, we plan, design, and provide stewardship to um, outdoor landscape systems and spaces. And um, many, many generations of landscape architecture have done this before. So the problem that we are targeting is not a new one. So planning a a landscape system for a city or for a community. And however, in the new, new century, we, we do face um, very different and more complicated um, challenges when we're doing landscape planning and design. So, and using Los Angeles County as an example. And we have quantity problem, which means that we don't have enough um, open space, we don't have enough outdoor landscape uh, settings for increasing population. And the pressure on the landscape system is increasing on also because that not only that we are demanding for more parks um, in, in terms of quantity, but also that um, we need to build parks and open spaces in higher quality. And not only to provide outdoor recreation space, but also to um, provide ecosystem services, also to, um, to be able to use the land to treat um, storm waters, purify the air, and also um, solve a lot of uh, uh, social problems involved. So there comes the challenges that we knew um, a new way of thinking in terms of solving this kind of problem, and many, um, practice have already leading to a direction that uh, because we don't have um, additional land for that purpose and we are looking at the green corridors or um, non-motorized transit corridors so that we can build these corridors to connect these open spaces. And looking at this map of Los Angeles County, you can see that not necessarily we're doing a very good job in terms of uh, um, developing or designing a system network for the entire region. Um, some neighborhoods are lucky enough, such as um, Long Beach, they have a um, well-connected uh, internal um, bi-network system, and that system is connected to um, some, oops, that system is connected to the regional um, kind of uh, um, um, class one bi-link along the rivers. And why many other communities, they do not have that uh, amenities available. And um, in our study area, which is the, um, the East San Gabriel Valley, um, which comprises of two tributary, uh, the Walnut Creek um, um, and the San Jose Creek sub-watersheds. So in that area, it's having exactly the same problem as many other areas in the county of Los Angeles. And um, we, this, this connectivity problem existing between um, the landscape settings in the system and non-mobilized uh, network is not well connected. Accessibility from different neighborhood to these locations are also limited. And of course, there are other issues like um, 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 environmental quality issues, you know, stormwater contamination and poor uh, air quality in that area. If you live in that area, obviously you will know about it. And our, our studio, uh, a team of faculty and students, we are tasked to um, develop a well-connected, multi-functioning landscape system to maximize access to preferred natural and social destinations to improve accessibility and efficiency of non-motorized transit and of course integrating existing and proposed government and agency plans so that we can um, target areas uh, for landscape design to incorporate sustainable solutions to address a list of environmental and, and social issues. 
Um, in, in this project, we, um, it's a typical landscape architecture project. However, we do have a strong focus of using geo design in, in planning the, um, the, the system. And um, there are the major role of geo design in this project includes systematic integration of both science based and value based information. Seamless incorporation of data rich environment that many, many of the speakers are already doing, rational and creative planning and design alternatives. We do have a very strong focus in terms of geo design in the change model um, as defined by Professor Steiners. And of course, that we also use this case as a pedagogical kind of demonstration of applying spatial thinking, system thinking, and advanced geospatial technology in landscape architecture practice. And I'm going to talk about the project is long and it, it, it involves a lot of components. And today, with only eight minutes, I'm going to just talk about the geo design part of it. And, um, the, and there are four components of it that I will go through. First is a landscape geo design process, integrating traditional landscape design process and the standard geo design framework. I'll get into more about that. A practical geo design diagram of workflow facilitating smooth conceptual and technical transition. And then also we build a, um, um, a tool based on ArcGIS environment um, in, oh, um, sorry, it's number three is to, we conduct, we also conduct applied design research too so that we can provide value-based community input. That piece is not uh, really kind of a more um, the geo design, but we use that to inform our geo design decision. And number four is a landscape connectivity suitability model that we build in um, the ArcGIS environment to facilitating automation of generating design alternative. And first is that is the landscape geo design process that we kind of examine. You know, through the years um, we have been exposed to um, geo design workflow, geo design frameworks, especially the uh, the Stainless framework, and um, we are integrating that into our uh, typical standard uh, studio process. Typically, usually start with um, issue identification, goals and objective development, and then getting into an, uh, analysis, science analysis, the physical analysis, and also the social analysis part of it. And then there comes the design synthesis, design alternative development, and then um, sign design, and then design implementation, and so on. So that's the typical kind of process that goes through in the studio. And in order to um, facilitate a smooth geo design process, we bring the stainless model into the table and then um, follow um, specific methods specified in the model so that we can um, trans translate the, 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 um, the typical um, traditional landscape architecture process into a more methodological kind of process. Um, and for example, we um, matched the uh, representation model, evaluation model, and process model with the, um, our typical standard analysis process. And then specifically, I want to highlight that we um, focus on the change model and in terms of developing um, design alternatives and scenarios. And we also follow um, a geo, we also use develop a geo design diagram kind of uh, uh, to help facilitate the, the, the transition of the technical process from uh, the theoretical foundation, the methodological framework into specific technical details. And uh, here in this diagram, we integrate spatial thinking, uh, saying us six different models, um, and then the standard GIS analysis process and then the different models that we use in analyzing the data, modeling the data, and then also the data that we use. Um, and in terms of practically, we gone through this, um, this, this process um, horizontally uh, laid out this way. And when we get a landscape problem, in our case, it's a suitability problem and also connectivity problem. Of course, there are other problems, sustainability, accessibility, preservation, and other problems that landscape architects solve. And um, we translate it into spatial problems. Um, this is really important for us because that um, when we are teaching students how to use GIS tools, it's all, there is always there's a gap 
um, on how students can understand the role of different models in solving landscape architecture problems. So the spatial problem transition kind of helps to, to smooth that learning process. So we translate landscape problem to prob spatial problems. Are you gonna find, whether you're gonna find the, the best location or whether you are trying to uh, use distance to uh, measure the impact or whether you are, you are modeling the trends uh, over, uh, over space and time and so on, or whether you're building a network like uh, what we're gonna, uh, uh, what, what, like what we are doing here. So we, we translate the landscape problem to spatial problem and then we also use the geo design framework to help um, identify methods theoretical method and, and methodological method that can, so that we can go through each of these models for uh, problem solving. And then we go through, for each of the um, model, we, go, we can go through the typical standard GIS procedure of data input, integration, modeling, analysis, synthesis, and data output. And um, for landscape architects, and it's very important for us to um, being able to build tools on ourselves. S3 provide very good collection of geospatial tools and they can be translated, they can be combined, they can be uh, 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 developed together to generate tools that are specific, uh, specialized for geospatial problem solving, landscape architecture problem solving. And then also very important is that we need to build a landscape geodatabase for our landscape problem solving. And that's what we have been doing and using that uh, to guide our curriculum revision, to guide our future um, geo design education in, in our department. And uh, for the, for the, uh, for the geo design part of this project, we also build two, um, um, tools, um, or uh, you can call models, to um, meet the modeling of suitability of the network, and then also modeling the connectivity among the, net, among the entire landscape system. So it goes through, I will not get into the specific details of these tools. Uh, basically, they are developed with uh, Visual Basic, and it's, uh, it can be used as add-on on the desktop ArcGIS environment. And I will, in the next step, we'll kind of go through Oops, this one. Um, one slide, sorry, one slide is missing. Basically, I don't know why it's not showing up. Um, basically, first we prepare a baseline landscape network, which is comprised of um, all the um, accessible uh, transportation corridors, whether it's for cars or for human or for wildlife. And the network can also include those ones that are proposed. We're, and we also have a collection of priority factors, uh, which uh, we um, develop through conducting um, in-house kind of a, 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 a scenario development. Uh, we also conducted uh, 23 meetings uh, with stakeholders, with uh, interested groups and expert groups to seek their feedback on what are their prioritized factors that should be um, used to determine the network. And of course, we start the existing plans and proposals to figure out what, have been, what kind of issue have been found before and what are the concerns of the uh, decision makers and so on. So with that, we generate a collection of uh, factors and um, not all factors are considered equally important based on uh, public input and also based on our team's uh, expertise. So we divided them into five different levels of importance and they are, they are, in, in, and they are individually mapped on these uh, graphics. Um, so the primary factors, secondary factors, tertiary factors, and so on. And Again, sorry, I don't know why it's not showing up. There's one image right here. Um, it's all, all of the prioritized factors are overlaid together, and their factoring value are captured into each of the, uh, each of the corridors. They, they, most, most of them are street corridors, but some of them are creek corridors, uh, trails, and so on. So you can see that this is a result of the landscape suitability surface. 
Um, on the surface, looking at the 3D model, you can then kind of have a sense on, you know, the, the, the green um, thin areas are the areas that, um, that are clustered with all the opportunities that should be connected, including parks, including schools, including uh, a vacant land that can be transformed into open space and wildlife species and so on. So you can name it. And of course, we do have also uh, the, the constrained areas in, on, on this surface, which are the areas that have less opportunity or those areas that, um, that have lots of constraints, such as you can see that these wars are uh, the freeway system. And for generating the final landscape network, we develop a different alternative based on the different issues that we have identified in this, uh, this study area. So we have regional connections, make sure that our system are well connected with the regional uh, uh, network, and we have community equity scenario uh, to make sure that you know, all, uh, um, all communities, regardless of their um, income level, regardless of their uh, social uh, cultural status, they will have access to this network. Of course, there are you know, major destinations such stadiums uh, and the colleges that have lots of people getting into. Uh, we make sure that those locations are well connected and so on. And, 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 so, on. and so these are the eight different scenarios that we create. These are, um, the dots are the uh, mass connect hubs that we define as a team. Um, and then the routes are generated based on uh, going through the most suitable uh, corridors in the network, and we generate a different scenario out of it. And of course, that we hope to have a one um, one integrated or synthesized network that can serve um, m most of these kind of functions or can help solve um, um, the the problem better. And we have an integrated landscape network shown up here, and the different color shows like. If a corridor shows green, which means that it's serving multiple uh, scenarios, it's serving multiple, it's addressing multiple uh, so, uh, solutions, and those are the ones that we are focusing on in terms of uh, bringing into side design stage. And you can see that it turns out that th this one um, is going east and west. And, and it also matched with our original concern about in Los Angeles County that most of the corridors are going south and north and they're like of a east and west corridor. So the result turns out the east and west corridor are most suitable in this case and um, that was a, um, a lucky match. And then along the corridors for just for students' side design experience, we highlight um, those locations that are appropriate for either updating the current uh, park system or building there are the vacant land that can be transformed uh, to be part of the network, or there is wildlife species, uh, uh, wildlife species um, habitat that, that need to be uh, paying attention. So with that, that was kind of a short-term kind of version of our network. Uh, in the long term, uh, all of the network can be built out in order to maximize the environmental benefits um, of the network. Of course, that the, the actually functioning landscape has to be happening at the size scale, uh, which we did pick a collection of signs to design, but I'm not going to get into that today. And with that, I'm going to conclude that um, we, with this project, we are highlighting kind of the, um, the design making function of geodesign. And in order to make geodesign um, uh, more of its own design, um, we believe that um, more focus should also be on the change model, in addition to um, uh, quickly examining the design impact. Um, so that concludes my presentation, and you can reach me at this email address. You can also talk to me um, when I'm in, during, the, during the conference. Thank you. Thank you, you Amen. Thank you.